What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel for another FM22 rebuild. Now this one is slightly different from some of the ones that you have seen before because I want to start adding little twists and little things to make these a little bit more unique but also a little bit more challenging for myself. Naturally just getting to the top of the league is a bit of an issue uh, in some of these because if you haven't seen last week i was derby manager as part of a rebuild uh started on minus 12 points managed to get them into the premier league and then things really started to grind and great because it was the premier league and trying to win that title is almost now on impossible unless you are established in that division for a long time and have a lot of money coming into your club so i thought i should try and make things a little bit more difficult and what i've done here is I've tipped over to Germany. Today's rebuild is Werder Bremen, who find themselves in the Bundesliga 2, the second tier of German football. But the restriction that I want to put on myself is that we can only sign German players. How do we get on? Let's jump in and find out. Right then, guys, here we are in the Bundesliga 2 at Werder Bremen. And as you can see, the season kicks off in just one day's time. So the restrictions, as I mentioned, we are only going to sign German players. And the reason I'm going to do that is because, as I said, I want things to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more difficult. And also, I just want to you know try and make these a little bit more a little bit more unique um so there we have the Werder Bremen uh history if we, you can see it here they are four times winners of the Bundesliga most recently in 2004 um and they obviously were relegated last season one time winner of the UEFA Cup Winners Cup six time German Cup winners um and obviously, as they were relegated from the Bundesliga last season, find themselves in the Bundesliga 2. Now, they were one of two big casualties getting relegated in Germany last year. That was between them uh, them and Schalke. Uh, I will give a shout out to Clates. He's done a fantastic rebuild of Schalke already. Seems like a regular recurring theme on his channel, doing, uh, doing Schalke, and I love it. Uh, so I went for the other one. Werder Bremen, fancy a bit of green. Seems like green's a bit of a theme on the channel at the moment. We've done a lot of Brazilian rebuilds, remakes. Uh, we've done the Norwich City win and spin. Uh, lots of green on the go at the moment. Favourite colour for the week, perhaps. Um, but there we go. That is Werder Bremen. This is what we're doing. Um, I've plugged in the GYRFM Wreck-It Ralph tactic. Uh, it is based from Ralph Rangnick, the new Manchester United manager. He is German and, you know, when in Rome or when in Bremen, do is the Raymond's do I don't know um so this is the team this is the tactic that we are going to run obviously we've got a couple players in on loan but what I will say anyone who's here already of a different nationality I am going to re-sign if I want to however any new player coming in will be German there is no ifs ands or buts about it they will be German I will not be spending money on players who aren't German um, and this is sort of, as I said, the transfer history of what we've done. There's nothing that I've already, uh, that I've done myself. This has all been done for me. So we're just going to plug in the tactic, get through season one and see how we are going to get on. In terms of the Bundesliga 2 and the pre-season preview, we are joint favourites with Schalke. Now, it, it sort of varies between if we sign someone, if they sign someone. Uh, since I've come in, I've obviously re redone the staff and stuff like that. Uh, that has given us a slight bit of an advantage. Um, but it's going to be tight between us two at the top of the table. So fingers crossed we can get the job done. Um, obviously, we just have that and the, the German Cup to play because we are in the second tier of German football. I'll be back at the end of the season to see if we can get ourselves promoted back to the promised land. So we are back. It is the end of the Bundesliga 2 season and we have been crowned champions. As you can see, we got uh, promoted as champions. And then this team here, Heide Heidenheim is how I'm going to say that, but I don't, I don't know that, that for certain have been promoted. Um, and unfortunately Schalke nowhere really near it 59 points for them they finished 10 points behind the team in second uh, and that team in second finished nine points behind us relatively dominant performance for us 24 points six draws four losses we are back in the Bundesliga uh, Nicholas Fulkrug who's on the thumbnail this is my main man he scored a lot of goals for us 23 goals uh, and five assists this season in all competitions fair play to him I thought he was very very good for us um, clinical in front of goal when we needed him to be and also Ultimately, we did pretty well in the league. Um, the Cup was not a priority this season, as you can see, knocked out in the second round by Wolfsburg. Obviously, they are a Bundesliga team. 
so we can kind of see uh, what has happened here. Hansa Rostock, uh, Rostock and this team here, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, uh, got relegated, unfortunately. Uh, I just actually, whilst I'm, whilst I'm talking about it, I kind of want to have a look at the Bundesliga to see who's been relegated. Greuther Fruth and Armenia Bleifeld, uh, however you say that, they, they have been relegated. Sorry, any Germans who watch this, I, I butchered it. I'm sorry. Um, so that is, they're the two teams that have been relegated. We obviously get promoted. So it's some some interesting uh, interesting topics as to who who we can bring in and how we can strengthen for this second year, second season actually in the Bundesliga. But look at that gap between Wolfsburg, who finished in second, and Bayern, who won the league with 93 points. Um, 22 points is a absolute chasm, which I'm not looking forward to, uh, to, to overturning. In terms of finances and stuff, uh, Germany is pretty good uh, once you are in the Bundesliga and you're making some decent money. Unfortunately, we don't really have that reflected in our transfer values right now. Uh, 858,000 is the transfer budget. Um, so I don't know what I will be trying to do with that. We do have a net debt as well, which I think we would be able to clear relatively quickly once we get back into the Bundesliga and we have a couple seasons. But the objective for the first season back in Germany's top flight is just staying in the division. Let's jump forward through the summer until we start season number two. And I can talk to you about all the business that we've done. Okay, so money in. We have made some money. Felix Agu, the right back, has gone to Real Sociedad for £9.75 million. Pounds. Now, he was a very, very good player for us. As you can see, if I go on to his career stats, played the whole season pretty much for us last year in the Bundesliga 2. Uh, but he wanted to leave, unfortunately. I didn't want to let him go because especially considering he can play on both flanks. Um... It, it kind of is what it is you know guys like he wanted to leave i didn't want that player upset in my club especially with how important dynamic is this year um so i had to unfortunately let him go the money coming into the club is very very nice so we've let two other players go uh yuri and mio uh back house i wonder if they're related they have to be related don't they surely Mio Backhouse. It's his brother. So they were both at the same club and now they've gone to separate clubs, uh, interestingly enough. Um, so we made some money there, 9.75 million. That could rise up to 13. And as you can see on the other side of the screen, we didn't uh, pay any money for any players, which is good. Um, Tom Kraus comes in uh, on loan from RB Leipzig. I think he looks very, very balanced. Obviously, he's got five-star potential. I think he looks like he can be a very solid player for us in that midfield role. Um, can kind of do a little bit of everything. And he's 21 years of age and he's German so obviously obviously he's German Steve everyone who comes in is German uh, we also signed Lucas Holler um, again another sort of interesting forward that can sort of um, play alongside full cloak um, a little bit more depth for us there uh, is a little bit pacier uh, nice physicals nice mentals and hopefully knows where the back of the net is in terms of his career stats he was at Freiburg last year scored 21 goals in the Bundesliga 20 21 in 34 appearances in the league is actually great uh, so I'm really really happy to bring this guy and he becomes our new number nine now the interesting one We've signed Karius, right? I needed a better goalkeeper, and I know some people are going to absolutely criticize me for this, but you try finding a German goalkeeper who wants to come to a team that have just been promoted back into the Bundesliga. In terms of his attributes, I actually think he's okay. And obviously, we all know he had that absolute shocker in the Champions League final. Um... But this is his potential chance at redemption. Since uh, since he's uh, left Liverpool, he's been at Union Berlin. He's been at Pumas over in Mexico. He now comes back to play in an elite league within Europe. And he comes in and will be our new number one. So obviously, we are now in the Bundesliga. We've obviously got the German League and German Cup as our two competitions. We are playing uh, this team. I don't know who they are uh, in the first round of the German Cup. And obviously, the board expectation this year is to avoid relegation. Uh, out of the Bundesliga. In terms of the season preview, we are 200 to 1 to win the league. So we've got better odds than two of the teams anyway. One of the teams that have come up and uh, Bochum as well. Uh, we've got the same odds as Augsburg. So we're kind of fancied in terms of being a, a team that can stay up. Um, however, doing much beyond that, I think could well be a little bit of a stretch obviously you've got the big names at the top of the table there Bayern, Hertha, uh, Dortmund, Leipzig, Wolfsburg, uh, Bayern, Leverkusen and Borussia Mönchengladbach obviously these are all sort of household names um, 
I wonder if we can stay up though. That is the question. That is the big question for us. In terms of the club vision, again, as I mentioned, uh, they just kind of want us to stay in the division. Uh, if I scroll up, you should be able to see it now. Avoid relegation and just reach the third round of the German Cup. I will be happy just staying up. That is my objective. Stay in the division, earn some money and go again for season number three. But without any further ado, you never know. We could get on really, really well. I'll be back at the end of season two. So season two is just over and we have avoided relegation, but it was damn close. As you can see, we've been dominated in a lot of these games considering that minus 28 goal difference 39 points for us though same amount of points as frankfurt and cologne um then 41 were for the three teams above so it is quite tight uh, between ourselves in 15th and Augsburg in eighth only four points separating the entire division there pretty much which is a big uh, 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 uh sorry no it's a small amount of uh, of points that we can overcome and try and get ourselves back into contention as you can see, Freiburg actually getting into the Europa Conference League with a goal difference of minus five um, and only nine points more than us throughout the course of the season. The interesting story, though, Bayern Leverkusen relegated. They have gone down. Uh, they had 33 points. So maybe we can go in and raid Bayern Leverkusen. Obviously, they do have... Um, uh, what's, your, what's your man's name? Oh, come on, Steve. Work, work your brain a little bit, please. Florian Verts. There we go. That's the guy who I would love to get. Uh, I don't think I will have the money for him, as you can see in the top right. His value is 44 to 64 million pounds, which we, yeah, we don't, we, we, we don't have that. Um, obviously, we survived in the Bundesliga, which meant we got some good money. The Bundesliga is really, really good for revenue. Um, also, the fact that usually for most teams, in most instances, there aren't any registration requirements as well in terms of foreign rules, work permits, blah, 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 as much as some of the other major leagues in Europe. We've got 13 million to spend. I don't know how we're going to spend it, to be perfectly honest. Um, finding Germans is harder than I thought. Um, obviously, no additional. Oh, sorry. No, we have had an additional. Uh, a young youngster has gone. Fabio, he, he, he's gone to Hertha. I don't know why Hertha wanted him. I, I didn't see any potential with him. So summer transfer window going into season number three. I think we need to strengthen a little bit. And I think given that goal difference, we need to look at our defense. I'll be back in a sec. And strengthen our defense we have. Now, ultimately, I think for the ins and outs, only spending 8.75 million on players is actually really, really good here. Um, and we've kind of raided Bayern a little bit. Um, so starting things off, uh, Maximilian uh, Mittelstadt uh, comes in, another left back. He can play very, very uh, well up that whole left-hand side, to be perfectly honest. And he's a very, very well-rounded player. Uh, he joins us uh, on a free transfer. Hertha Berlin did not renew his contract, having only played twice for them last season. So I think he can give me a little bit more depth on that side. Um, Sieb, Sieb, Armindo Sieb is how I'm going to say this guy's name, has joined us from uh, Bayern Munich. He can play as a striker, he can play as a cam, he can play on either side. Um, so it gives us a little bit of versatility there. He's five star potential. We signed him for free, he hasn't played for Bayern last year, played for their second team 11 times, was okay. I'm hoping with some more game time, he can come into, uh, you know, be a decent little player for us. He's kind of a cover option uh, and a little bit of a squad player, as you can see from his agreed playing time. Felix Paschlik comes in as well. He's very much the same on the right-hand side as we've got on the left-hand side. We brought in a new fullback to kind of add a little bit more depth in those positions. Um, he's quite quick, which is quite nice as well. Good teamwork, good work rate, and decent enough where I need him to be in those defensive attributes. Um, Teshert is how I'm going to say this dude's name. It's another striker's come in, another bit of pace. Um, again, is he's listed as a regular starter. I don't think he will be. But because we are playing two strikers in this formation, I feel like I need four uh, to cover me throughout the course of the season. So he has joined. Marvin Orbuz has come in uh, from uh, Cologne. We signed three players from Cologne in this window. He's one of them. Can play on either wing. Again, offers that little bit of versatility. Uh, Bisek, this is the guy I'm really, really impressed with. I think he's really going to help us at the back. Um, massive, really tall, 17 jump and reach. Uh, nice mentals and good technicals where he needs them for a central defender. I'm really looking forward to seeing him play. Uh, Leon Schneider comes in again. Another centre-back who can kind of do a little bit of everything. Can play right back as well. Can play in the centre 
if needed. Um, again, another little option. As you can see, we can kind of focus in on what we are trying to improve here. Another striker, another central midfielder. It's just bodies, to be perfectly honest, guys. Keeping all these guys happy is going to be very, very difficult. Christopher Scott comes in. I actually figure this guy will play a lot more for us. He comes in from Bayern Munich again. Um, this guy on 1.8 million. Uh, does that rise? No. Potential cost including add-ons is just 1.8 million on him. Then we signed three guys as free transfers. Another centre back here, uh, Kemp. I signed him before I signed the other guys. So, um, yeah, not sure how much he's actually going to play for us. But defensive options and defensive cover is pretty good. Another central midfielder here, a bit more of a ball player in Dachner. Another player coming in off a free transfer, having been released from St. Pauli. And then Gohan Gul. Is how I'm going to say this dude's name. Another central midfielder, a bit more defensive minded. I could come in as a CDM as required and can also play centre back. So as you can see, quite a lot of players in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve players in in one transfer window. This is hopefully the depth that we 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 really did require uh, going into the Bundesliga starting at season number three though in the season preview we are predicted 250th to one to win the league so they think we are going to struggle potentially and scrap it out please notice that Schalke still haven't been promoted just yet so make of that what you will right I'll be back at the end of season three so the squad depth has helped massively and at the end of season three we've managed to finish fourth in the Bundesliga and not only have we managed to finish fourth in the Bundesliga, as you can see, we won the DFB Pokal as well. I don't understand how we've done this, to be perfectly honest. Lucas Holler, top goal scorer for us in both the Bundesliga and in the Pokal. Um, 18 victories for us, 8 draws, 8 losses, 15 goal difference, massive atonement from the goal difference. If, you, if we uh, pop up the stages here and show the league table, uh, last season we had a goal difference of minus 28. This season we've really turned it around much more defensively solid and have a positive goal difference of plus 15. So that is a massive, massive swing. Uh, to, to kind of make things happen. So we actually take the place of Dortmund in the Champions League, uh, beating them to it by a point. Uh, last two games of the season, they kind of threw it away there. Um, as you can see, a loss and a draw, and we won both of ours. So we got into that top four spot. Um, the difference again between ourselves and Bayern Munich is massive. But in terms of the club vision though, all they wanted us to do was finish in the relegation playoff. Uh, sorry, that's what they want us to do next season. What was the... What, yeah, finish in the relegation playoff and we've come fourth and won the cup. So uh, they should be pretty pretty darn happy however i do have quite a few as i mentioned uh, it would probably would happen i've got quite a few unhappy players in the dynamic which i'm gonna have to sort out over the summer as we go into season number four but from the bundesliga two to the champions league in four seasons signing only german players that's not bad is it so we've got Champions League to contend for in season number four. And as you can see, we've had to move a couple of players out of the club. Sieb uh, was one that came in. Uh, Gokhan Gul is gone. And Trushart has also gone. Uh, some of these out on loan. Some of them full-time transfers. And on the other side of things, guys, we brought in Killian Ludwig from Hertha uh, for 1.3 million. And again, it's another sort of option cover i feel like we need at least two good players in every position uh paul jackal comes in as well as another central back uh, center back option much uh, much better in terms of jumping reach uh to to get in that position and jean luca iter comes in again on that left back as cover um as I said, I feel like depth is kind of where we're going to struggle this season and not having a decent level player to come in uh, is going to do that. Obviously, we are in the Champions League. We enter in the group stage. We are also in the DFL Super Cup, having won the Pokal last year. So we will take on Bayern Munich in that. So a potential of winning four trophies in season four. It's not going to happen, guys. It's, 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 it's just not. They want us to qualify for the Europa Conference League uh, via the league this season. That is the board expectation. And in terms of the season preview, guys, um, we're in the Champions League and they still think we're going to finish 12th. So 150 to 1 to win the division. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen. 
So we'll, we'll just, uh, I don't think we'll finish 12th, but I also don't think uh, we will win the title either. I think somewhere in between, you know, between uh, 5th, 6th, 7th, I think is kind of where we're looking. Bayern Leverkusen, though, have come back up. They were promoted last season and have odds of 50 to 1 to win the Bundesliga. Obviously, in terms of the squad and the tactic and stuff, things aren't really changing. This is the tactic again. If I just do a quick, quick pick, this is my best 11. This is kind of how we're looking. Uh, Carrier single, uh, pass. Slack, Bissek, uh, Freudel, Itter, Scott, Jacko, uh, Schmind, uh, Mittelstad, uh, Dutch, Sean, sure. and then Holler up top. Um, obviously, we've got Falkirk, uh, Ludwig, and Baum. You know, we've got we've got depth now um, in a lot of positions. We've still, still got some un unhappy players in here, but I'm really happy with how the squad is shaping up for season number four. I hope we get a good Champions League group and maybe, just maybe, we could get out of it. I'll see you at the end of the season. So all in all, I think playing in European competition did hamper us a little bit. We did advance through the Champions League, though, knocked out in the quarterfinals by AC Milan. Uh, but it looks like we've kind of taken our eye off the ball in basically every other uh, competition. Knocked out in the third round by Rassen Ball Sport Leipzig, um, obviously. RB. Um, they did, you know, it's the third round, I suppose, but that is a difficult draw, I will say. Uh, DFL Super Cup, we were runners up in that. Bayern absolutely slapped us. 5 2 to Bayern in that one. Uh, knocked out in the quarterfinals, as I mentioned, uh, by AC Milan. 4 3 on aggregate, though, so uh, relatively close for game. Uh, just out of curiosity, who do we have in our Champions League group? We were in Group E and we topped the group uh, in a group with Monaco, Juventus, and Shakhtar. Not necessarily the strongest, but Juve having a little bit of a Stinker only beating Shakhtar, uh, drawing with Monaco and Shakhtar, and then losing twice to us and away in Monaco as well in the south of France. It's a very, very clear cut, to be perfectly honest. And um, we're getting some good results here, just ticking things over. The occasional loss sort of uh, derailing us in the league. RB Leipzig uh, losing to Cologne, losing to Hoffenheim, Freiburg. As you can see, the, the results did sort of start to stack up. In terms of the first knockout round in the Champions League, uh, we lost away in Rome to Roma 3-2. We won the game at home 1-0 and then exit uh, took, uh, sorry, dispatched Roma on penalties. Uh, sorry, Lorenzo, if you're watching this, pal. Uh, dispatched Roma on penalties uh, and then got knocked out by AC Milan. Um, but that run towards the end of the season is kind of littered with defeats. Four defeats at the last four games in the league. Uh, very, very disappointing as well. But if we go over to the Bundesliga, Let's take a look at the stages. Uh, it's, it's not a bad finish for us in all, all actuality. They, they predicted that we finished 12th. Um, and with the European competition, I think it really did dampen us. Um, so we're going to have a real, real red hot crack at it for season number five without any European competition and then the, and the extra games building in. But Bayern Leverkusen got relegated again, promoted last season, relegated in season four, uh, second relegation for them, which is a big, big yikes. Um, I've got a lot more money to spend now, as you can see, 42 million in the transfer budget. And I'm going to go all out. I'm going to spend loads. I'm going to do loads in installments as well, because why not? It's season number five. And we're going to finally see how we can get Werder Bremen, how high up this table i'll be back in a sec so then guys it is the start of season number five there are some players that have left us uh Karius is gone he's gone to rb leipzig holler has gone he has gone to hertha berlin and uh Tuchert has gone to schalke who are still in the bundesliga too um and I've spent some money and I told you guys, I told you I was going to do this. I've done a lot of it in, in installments. So I'm going to talk you through the players that I have signed. Nico Mantel comes in from RB Salzburg. He is a German. Despite playing his club football in Austria, he comes in to replace uh, Karius. He's okay. Finding German goalkeepers is very, very difficult, I will say. He looks okay. He's nothing overly special. Uh, we paid 2.4 million for him. We also signed Paulinho. We went and attacked uh, Bayern Leverkusen following their second relegation in four years. Um, and he looks quite nice, quite a, quite a nice option on that left-hand side as the left attacking midfielder. Um, then we started spending some cash, guys. Florian Wurtz, we went and bought him for 70 million. 
a lot of it is in installments so you know you take of that what you will you can say i cheated or whatever uh that that's kind of up to you guys but we've got florian verts now i think he's a very very good player uh grows into a absolute world beater he's only 22 years of age and as you can see from his attributes guys already he looks very very good i want him to dominate that central attack in midfield uh, central midfield roles for us and be the main man who makes us tick and then this guy he was transfer listed by dortmund um i think he wanted to play a little bit more football he's a new gen just have a look at this guy tell me what you think of this guy i think he's going to be electric for us he's got great dribbling finishing already good first touch good passing good technique very agile very very fast he's not the best player in my team but i think he could be he's only 18 um obviously he's come through the dortmund youth ranks and he just wanted to play football i kind of bought him initially thinking that he could be a winger but i have a feeling he may end up playing up top for us as an advanced forward he comes in rated at the moment in that role and duty as a three and a half star advanced forward um and i think he could be quite tricky up there in terms of competitions we are only back in the two competitions this year the Pokal and the bundesliga the board expectation is a top half finish and the media prediction says that we are going to finish ninth which is that top half finish we are 50 to 1 uh, to win the league i don't see it happening i think bayern are still too strong but we will try our best for season number five the fifth and final season so guys we tried our damnedest but unfortunately we couldn't get past Bayern. we did finish second in the bundesliga we had a rough run uh, to finish the league campaign but we've been in second for a decent amount of the season Bayern, Werder Bremen, Mainz and Dortmund round off that top four uh, uh, Leipzig, Fiorentina, Dusseldorf and Hertha uh, complete the teams that are going through into European competition unfortunately Hamburg and Nuremberg are relegated and I did say about this guy the new gen he is electric he was our top goal scorer uh, best player in the team his agility is rocketed up to 19 he's got great pace uh all around and his, his technical attributes are getting much much better 34 goals in 35 appearances almost a goal a game uh for this guy and obviously i'm gonna say looking at his progress uh looking at his attributes throughout the course of all time he's definitely progressing quite nicely as you can see uh, i think he looks like a unbelievable player and i would love to play some more with him but unfortunately i'm not going to he's currently a four and a half star rated ability player uh, and he is valued at almost 100 million which is absolutely insane knocked out in the quarterfinals of the poker by mines which is a little bit frustrating uh, but again the youngster popping up with six goals in that competition as well ultimately guys i think this has been a very positive rebuild of verda um, and i would like to see where they would go uh, moving things forward but um in actuality i think a very solid place in the in the champions league again um maybe over a couple more years we will be able to overturn Bayern, but i think that is a little bit too much of a ask so unfortunately that is where i'm gonna leave things for today if you did want to play this save yourself i will make it available in my discord channel just drop into the rebuilds uh, thread that we will have there and you if you want to take the save you can take the save and play this from here yourself if you want to get your hands on big Soren here um that is where i'm going to leave it for today guys if you have enjoyed this rebuild drop a like on the video down below subscribe to the channel if you are new around here picking up the content for the very first time it really will mean a lot to me but until next time guys take care of yourself stay safe and i'll see you on another one very very soon